digestive enzymes, and the fates of the products of digestion. Enzymes An enzyme is an organic catalyst. Enzymes speed up chemical reactions by orienting reactants in their active sites in a way that lowers their energy of activation. In this graph we see a reaction taking place without an enzyme, that's this solid orange line here. Then with an enzyme is the dotted red line. And as we can see by the graph, the activation energy for the uh, dotted red line with the enzyme has a lot less activation energy than the uh, solid orange line without the enzyme. How enzymes work. Digestive enzymes break the bonds of polymers, reducing them to monomers. Substrate molecules fit into the active site of an enzyme the same way that a key fits into a lock. The formation of an enzyme substrate complex brings about a conformational change in the enzyme that stresses bonds of the substrate, helping to break them. In this example, we see a substrate represented by a triangle in a semicircular uh, shape next to that. It binds into the active site, which is complementary in shape to the substrate, fits in like a lock and key, and then when the uh, substrate is broken down, we have two smaller products being released. How are carbohydrates digested? Enzymes digest complex carbohydrates, polysaccharides, into simple sugars, monosaccharides, and disaccharides. Digestion of carbohydrates begins in the oral cavity. Salivary glands produce amylase, which breaks down polysaccharides into maltose, a disaccharide, and dextrin, all shorter chains of glucose. Digestion of carbohydrates continues in the small intestine with amylases produced by the pancreas. How are proteins digested? Proteases and peptidases digest proteins into amino acids. Each one has a different specificity, meaning each one breaks the peptide bonds next to it into different types of amino acids. In the diagram below, a spartyl protease, ASP, is breaking down a peptide bond of an aspartate amino acid. So the aspartate amino acid is here. Uh, the enzyme, aspartyl protease, is this guy right here. And then with the addition of water, the water is right here, uh, the enzyme will break down the peptide bond, which is right here. And then as a result, we have an amino acid that is now broken down. This is an example of hydrolysis, where we add water uh, to break apart the bond, or the covalent bond, uh, linking uh, the two parts of the amino acid. Types of protease enzymes. Pepsin is a protease that is secreted by the lining of the stomach and works at low pH in conjunction with stomach acids. Trypsin is made by cells in the pancreas, enters the duodenum, which is the upper part of the small intestine, via the pancreatic duct, and works at the basic pH of the small intestine. Chymotrypsinogen is an inactive precursor of a protease made by cells in the pancreas. It enters the duodenum, again that's the upper part of the small intestine, via the pancreatic duct, where it is converted to chymotrypsin, an active protease. Lipids. Most breakdown of lipids occurs in the small intestine and is carried out by products of the liver and pancreas. Bile salts emulsify lipids in the duodenum, which increases the surface area of fat droplets. Pancreatic lipases digest fat molecules such as triglycerides into smaller lipids, including fatty acids and glycerol. In the diagram down here, we see uh, the bile uh, bind to part of the lipid, so it creates a hydrophobic side and a hydrophilic side and allows it to be more dissolvable in water or a, a watery solution. And then the uh, digestive enzymes can go to work on the lipid. Nucleic acids. Nucleic acid digestion begins in the stomach. Gastric juice and pepsin break down DNA into smaller fragments. In the small intestine, RNA and DNA will be further broken down into nucleotides by nucleases. At the end of the small intestine, known as the ileum, nucleotides are broken down into their components, sugars, phosphates, 
and nitrogenous bases. Fates of the digested nutrients. The entire digestion process of the digestive system is extracellular, as it takes place outside of the cells. The use of nutrients is all intracellular, or happening inside of a cell. In order to be used, the nutrients are taken up by the cells, crossing from blood into cytoplasm. Fates of the digested nutrients. Nutrients provide both matter and energy for cells, requirements for life. Matter refers to the carbon skeletons of monomers, vitamins, and minerals are used by cells to build new molecules of life, of all four classes. Energy is released when glucose is broken down further by the process of cellular respiration. In this process, energy is extracted by oxidative phosphorylation. The glucose is oxidized and ADP is phosphorylated. Fates of the digested nutrients. Other molecules enter the cellular respiration process at metabolic intersections, such as acetyl coenzyme A, intermediates of glycolysis, and intermediates of the Krebs cycle. Glycolysis is the process of breaking down the glucose into pyruvic acid, uh, and then pyruvic acid, along with other intermediates, uh, into the mitochondrion. And in the mitochondrion, uh, oxygen is used to further break down these intermediates to release energy to charge up ADP into the ATP we see pictured down here. Excessive intake. If excess food is ingested, glucose can be converted into glycogen in the liver and muscles for storage and as a source of blood glucose until the next meal. Persistent ingestion of excess calories will lead to storage of fat. Following glycolysis, excess acetyl coenzyme A, rather than being a reactant in the Krebs cycle, is then used as a building block to make fatty acids by fatty acid synthases. Fatty acids combine with glycerol and then form triglycerides, which are stored in fat cells in fatty tissues of the body.